Good afternoon. My name is Pete Duffy. I'd like to welcome everyone to this three-part mini-series entitled Harnessing the Power of People Through Effective Meeting Facilitation. Before I get started, I'd like to share a little bit about my background. I'm a resident of the town of Merrimack, and I've lived here with my wife and family for the last 20 plus years. From a work and career perspective, I'm a business development and communications professional. I've worked for small, medium, large, and multinational corporations. And I want to let you know that I'm proud to be here today to talk to you about a subject that I'm very passionate about, and that is empowering people to be successful. Now, over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be sharing with you my purpose, why I'm here, and as well, a high-level high overview of the series. But before I get started, I want to share a brief story with you. There was a time in my career where I really was not very good at running business meetings. As a matter of fact, I was pretty bad at it. And if anybody here viewing this video has ever been on the receiving end of a badly run meeting, you know how frustrating it can be. Quite often you're saying, who's leading this and what time am I out of here? Well, you can imagine being a new leader in my job, how frustrated I was. Well, my job required that I be good at this skill. And well, I like to be as good as I possibly can be. I keep to myself to a high standard. So I made the decision that I was going to go on a year-long journey of self-learning. And I did all the things that people do. Read books, attended webinars, listened to podcasts. I even went to people's meetings so I could see how they did it. And after a year's time, I still wasn't where I wanted to be. My confidence was hurting. It was impacting my leadership, my team's performance. I was at a very low level of my career. And then one day, that all changed when I met my mentor. My mentor's name was Frank. And I'll never forget the day that I met Frank. He was a very special person. It was a cold, wintry day in November. And I met Frank at the Nashua Marriott. We had a table at the very end of the dining room. Frank sat on one side of the table and I sat on the other. And Frank listened to me as I shared my experience. He could tell that one of his leaders was really hurting, that confidence had been affected. And as Frank listened to me, he was able to respond and help me to understand how I could use my own gifts, talents, skills, abilities, experiences to run great meetings. Importantly, he helped me to understand that by running great meetings, I can empower others to be excellent, both personal and professionally. That great meetings as a leader were not about me. No, that I had to leave my ego at the door, but rather it was about harnessing the intellectual and the creative power and capacity and building an environment that led to achievement. Importantly, Frank taught me how to approach a meeting from a very high level to start off, high level thinking, and then how to approach agenda creation, and then game day, how to do the meeting management, or as I call, meeting facilitation. This gift that Frank gave to me made a huge difference in my career. It gave me tremendous confidence. My team went on to skill build amazingly, and we had many achievements together. So upon reflecting on this gift that Frank gave me, I realized that he gave it to me freely, no strings attached. A beautiful thing. 
So I've decided that I'm going to give this gift freely to anybody who wants it. And know that if you work at this with what I call a curious mindset and practice it with what I call the three P's, passion, patience, and perseverance, that you too, over time, can be wildly successful at this very important skill set. Now, just so you all know that Frank is real, I just wanted to show you this. So this is a baseball from the World Series that Frank sent to me years later after we worked together. And it says, you're a winner, Frank B. He's a very selfless man, made a big difference in my life. So I'm approached by many people who say, Pete, there's a lot of what I call vehicle content out there or content vehicles from which to learn how to run effective meetings. And I totally agree, there are. This works for me. All I can say is find something that works for you and commit to it. And importantly, find yourself somebody who you can respect and trust to be your mentor, like Frank was for me, who can give you effective and caring and timely feedback. It's very important to understand that it is only by being accountable to other people, people who are better than we are, that we actually grow as individuals, as human beings. So now, who is this for? Well, this is for people who want to become more confident in running meetings. For instance, that brand new manager who's having his or her meeting with her team next week, and they don't have a framework with which to use to how to approach it. Been there, done that. Could be for a team leader who's leading their team at a very important client presentation or a sales pitch and they want to tighten up the meeting. Maybe there's a piece that's not quite right. Perhaps it's a person here in town that's running a club or running some type of team or meeting at the PTA or a town meeting of some sort. They just want to kind of get a framework for it. And lastly, for a teacher. Today's day and age is particularly challenging in harnessing students and engaging them in meaningful ways. Perhaps there's something here that you can use in terms of planning your classroom management, learning to be leading to better learning. All the above. So, before I share a high-level overview of the series, I wanted to introduce you to a very, very good friend of mine. And this friend has been with me for a very long time, and he's made a very big difference in my career. And that friend's name is Mr. Flipchart. That's right, Mr. FC, I call him. Now, Mr. FC is very different than, say, Mr. PowerPoint. Mr. Flipchart here has made a difference in hundreds and hundreds of people's and teams' lives. Because what Mr. Flipchart does, he is enables engagement and collaboration around things like brainstorming, problem solving, resolving conflict, goal setting, perhaps keeping track of accomplishments in meetings, motivating, rewarding, all the above. But what's most important about Mr. Flipchart, as he is a very generous friend, is unlike Mr. PowerPoint, Mr. Flipchart allows you to write on him. You can write anything you want, like, hi. Mr. Flipchart knows that we as humans, we need, and it's very helpful to us, when we write things down and we write them in color, that we just tend to remember them more. 
So Mr. Flip Chart, very, very smart and a very good friend. So, Mr. Flip Chart, are you ready to introduce the three parts of the series? Absolutely. So let's get started. Part one of harnessing the power of people is what I call high-level thinking. It's how we think about if and how we should have a meeting. It doesn't matter if it's 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or three days. What is the value of having the meeting and how do we approach it? So these are four, five questions that we'll talk about in part one. First of all, should I or shouldn't I have the meeting? It's a very important question because people's time is valuable. Company resources are valuable. So you want to make sure that when you do it, you do it right. Second, how long should the meeting be? What's the rule of thumb? How long should I take to plan my meeting? Really important. And there are rules of thumb for that as well. What is my planning environment supposed to be like? Particularly interesting conversation. And then finally, what comes out of all this is, what's the purpose of the meeting? So part one dovetails nicely into part two. And part two is about agenda creation. And I want to accentuate the word creation. Because creation means that you build something that didn't exist into something that does exist. You bring it in. So it means that you use your thinking and your imagination to build an amazing experience for your team through agenda creation. In this part, we will talk about three questions. One is, is there alignment between my goal, the meeting purpose, and topics? Because they, they work through each other. Topics build up to the goal, and goals feed down into the topics. It's all consistent. Second is, how do I involve people in the meeting? Very important. A meeting where one person talks and everybody else listens really is not an effective meeting. So how do we do that and why is that important? And three is communication. It's about getting your thoughts into your people's minds before you actually get to the meeting so they can start chewing on those thoughts. Very, very important. And then lastly, it's game time. And that's meeting facilitation. And this is where you take all of your planning from part one to part two and you, you take it into action. And it's going to be easier because of everything you did up front. But now it's time to facilitate that meeting. We're going to talk about very, very important four things. First is time. Time is your ally. So how do we approach time from many different perspectives? Second is how do we set people's expectations so that they know what to expect within the meeting at every point in time so that they are continuously engaged? Four is how do we make sure that there's no energy gaps in the meeting? The longer the meeting and the later the meeting in the afternoon, the more chance there are is to have energy gaps. It's important to make sure we fill those gaps with something meaningful. We'll talk about that. And lastly, wrapping up. Critical. A critical component of the meeting. Bring it to closure and having people energized when they leave. So, harnessing the power of people. High-level thinking, agenda creation, and meeting facilitation. That's the name of the game. Okay? So to set your expectations with this, I call this a mini-series. And what my approach is, is to give you building blocks that you can use, format that you can use. It takes, in many cases, a lifetime to work at this art or build an art like many other arts that people build. Right? But this is a format that will give you something you can work on immediately and feel confident about. 
So, a little housekeeping before we finish up. In terms of questions and follow-up, obviously this video will be on Merrimack Television, but I will also be posting the video on LinkedIn, and it will go to Twitter, and as well as my notes. So everything that I have discussed with you today will be in hard copy. If you want to get in touch with me, you can get, get in touch with me on LinkedIn Messenger or on my Gmail right here. And I promise to respond to you within 48 hours. You can look for part one of this series in seven to 10 days. So, lastly, I wanted to say that on behalf of myself and Mr. Flipchart, we want to thank you so very much for joining us today. We hope this was a valuable experience, and I hope that you have an awesome day and week. Take care.